What is up you guys, I hope you're all doing well, I'm Tony Fuentes and welcome back to the Ed Like series. In this case we're going to edit into the urban photography scene with Billy Dee's profile. Now Billy Dee or Bill, Billy Dean is his actual name, is a photographer based in New York and his style is very cinematic resembling the thriller movies from the theaters or the cinema. Now it's kind of similar to Monari's style, a profile that we've already analyzed and really based. I'll put it up here in the cards if you want to check out their styles. So. His style is very special. First, we're gonna jump into Instagram and break down his style, how he takes his photographs and the basis of his editing. And then in Instagram, we're gonna edit a photograph, create a preset out of it, and then see how it performs on several scenarios. So let's jump into it, guys. So this is Billy Dean on Instagram. Billy D with three E's is his Instagram handle. If you wanna go and support him, go ahead and follow him. Now, if we scroll down, the first thing that we see is that most of his photographs are taken at night in a very cold day or a very rainy day and it's fantastic guys here we can see that it's not quite as sharp as Rayleigh Vest style first of all we can see that it looks like it's pulled out from a Hollywood movie there's not too much sharpness not too much clarity not too much contrast in general and then we can see that the highlights are completely dimmed down that's why you have a lot of information in the snow normally when you shoot a photograph or a portrait in particular in the snow you can see how the camera chooses what to expose and normally the model is exposed and the background is completely blown out particularly in very snowy days but in this case here we can see that the highlights are completely dimmed down not all the way to 100 but maybe to a 75 percent or something like that and again in the highlights we can see this yellow palette or reddish palette mixed in the highlights so that's done in the tone curves we're going to jump into the tone curves it's going to be quite a complete edit and other than that guys another thing that we can notice straight away is his film grain which is quite notorious there's quite a lot of quantity and roughness but still it's not too distracting it's replicating the film grain that we can see in Ari Alexa cameras or professional cinema cameras if we keep scrolling down his style it's fantastic if we zoom into this portrait maybe this was shot with a black pro mist or something like that or well, basically he could add this effect with the dehaze tool where the highlights are blooming has this bloom effect or this halo effect around them and also the skin of the model kind of glows a bit and makes it a bit more flashy one thing that we can notice in this portrait in particular is that the blacks or the shadows in particular have a little hint of bluish tone again that's done in the tone curves and one thing that we can notice in the skin tones is that they're not orangey or tan like the previous tutorials that we've done about risk glass or about Valdez. those profiles have very specific orangey tones in the skin tones in this case they're very natural tending towards the yellowish tones more than the oranges beautiful portrait in the metro and here we can see the skin tones that are tending towards the yellowish tones that gives me a hint that he shoots photographs with a sony camera and then again once again the bluish tones light bluish tones in the shadows fantastic portrait once again in the rain again highlights with this yellowish or reddish vibe sometimes he applies a little bit of magenta into the highlights but that's not very recurring on his style but he does it sometimes now one thing that's very important to replicate his cinematic style is the aspect ratio on his images here we can see that he's cropped it to a 21 by 9 and that aspect ratio we can see in cinematic movies like inception like oblivion lord of the rings all of those movies have this very wide and stretched out aspect ratio less artistic movies like comedy movies normally have an aspect ratio of 2 to 1 not a 21 by 9 which really cuts in a bit of the image so again beautiful portraits once again and here in this last one we can see again the highlights with that warmish tones in them now because he's decreasing a lot of the sharpness and the clarity on his images it kind of looks like it was shot with a very old camera with a low megapixel but again if we zoom into this image in particular this one is shot at full resolution my guess this is a sony a7r3 or a sony a7r4 with high megapixel count because this image in particular that ha doesn't have too much editing has an incredible sharpness and resolution even with the down sampling that instagram applies so his profile is fantastic guys here we can see the profile at its full extent with the skin tones and the bluish tones it's not too harsh like Ray Lives but it's not too too colorful like Monaris style so remember if you want to replicate his style genuinely just go out and shoot in a very snowy day or a very rainy day at night in the urban scene and you can achieve these type of photographs guys now this one is shot with a very shallow depth of field that's done with a prime lens but most of his shots don't have that shallow depth of field you can do it with a 2.8 or a zoom lens in particular so let's jump into Lightroom and edit his style guys so guys here we have several images on Lightroom we're going to concentrate on the ones that have people in them portraits in particular so let's jump into the first one 
and go to develop tab. Now starting off, what I want to do is go to the basic corrections and really dim down the highlights. I'm gonna go with a minus 75%. And remember that the overexposure and contrast as well as the white balancing will depend on each image. So I'm not going to move them initially, guys. Then the shadows, I'm going to go with a plus 45 just to bring back a little bit of information in the blacks. Then the blacks, we're going to go with a minus 19. And the whites again, we're going to go with a minus 11 to dim them down just a bit. Now it's looking quite dark. That's when the overexposure comes in, which will pull it up just a bit to see what we're working with. Then in the presence, here's where we want to decrease most of the texture and the clarity of this image. Now we're going to go with a minus 19 on the texture. On the clarity, we're just going to go with a minus 16 once again. And then in the haze, we're going to add that gloom effect to the highlights and to the skin tones in particular with, with a minus 19. Then in saturation and vibrance, we're just going to move the vibrance down to a minus 25%. And then the saturation, we're going to move it individually in the edge cell. Now with Y and our keyboard, we can see the before and after, and the image is looking slightly more cinematic. Here we can see that lumen effect that we have with the decays and the reduction in the texture and the clarity on the highlights. Now for this example in particular, I'm gonna crop it to a 21 by nine aspect ratio to make it a bit more cinematic. Now if you don't see the aspect ratio of 21 by nine, you can enter in the customs, here are the proportions with a 21 by nine and automatically Lightroom will adjust the crop factor to a 21 by nine. And here we can see that the image is a lot more cinematic in this aspect ratio, guys. Then we're gonna to go to tone curves and here we're gonna add that effect to the highlights where we have that yellowish or reddish tone in the highlights and also that bluish tint in the shadows. Now, first of all, in the RGB tone curve, what we're going to do is put a point in the midtones and a point in the shadows. Now, a point in the midtones will alter the skin tones in particular. Normally, the skin tones are in the midtones area. So, it's gonna pull the midtones up over the diagonal just like that to make them pop just a little bit more. And then the shadows, we're not gonna move them, but the blacks, we are gonna raise them just a little bit to achieve that faded look effect. Not too much, just ever so slightly, just like that. It's a minimal move. And this point in the shadows basically acts as an anchor so we don't lose any contrast in the shadows in particular. Then we're gonna jump into the blue channel and here we're gonna add that bluish tint into the shadows and that warmish tone into the highlights. So for that, we're gonna put a lot of points, one in the shadows, one in the midtones one in the highlights and one between the blacks and the shadows in particular. This point, we're just gonna drag it up a bit to the bluish tones, just like that. It's a minimum move. And then a point in the highlights is gonna go all the way towards the yellowish tones, just a little bit to add that warmish tone. Here we can see in the lights, in the background, how that warmish tone has been applied. It's a minimum move. Don't overdo it, guys. Otherwise, your style will be very stylized and very posterized, and that's not what we want. Then in the red tone curve, in the red channel, we're gonna add some points again, point in the shadows, point in the midtones, and a point in the highlights. And the highlights, we're just gonna pull them up towards that reddish tone ever so slightly for those tones to combine with a lot yellowish to achieve this warmish tone that Billy D has. Next up in HSL. Now HSL, we're not gonna move too much. Again, we're just gonna desaturate a lot and just move a bit of the sliders to emphasize the skin tones of the subject. Now in Hue, what we want to do is move the oranges up towards the yellowish tones. We don't want to, them to the other side, that would take them towards the reddish. Just gonna put a 22 into the skin tones or the oranges to take them towards that yellowish tone that. Then in Luminance, we're gonna add a plus 30 to the oranges and that basically will draw a lot of attention, a lot of brightness into the skin tones in particular. Then in Saturation, we're gonna desaturate basically everything with a minus 12 on the reds a minus 10 on the oranges, a minus 23 on the yellows, minus 25 on the greens, and everything else we're gonna go with a minus 28. Now, I'm desaturating basically every single color. Why I didn't do it in the general saturation is so we can be a bit more specific. If I desaturated everything over here, every single color would lose information or color. And in this case, in particular, we don't want to affect the skin tones too much. Then over in color grading, now we can see that we have these three wheels that we had in Premiere Pro to edit the color grading in video. And instead of the split toning, what we want to add is a bit of luminance into the midtones. Again, the midtones control the skin tones. So we're gonna click on the midtones over here and in the luminance, just add a 50% to make them a bit more brighter. Then the highlights, here we're gonna add a yellowish hue to the highlights in particular. Here we can add a hue of 17, we're just gonna type it in, 28 on the saturation, and then a 16 on the luminance. You can see what this has done. It basically adds a bit more luminance and a bit of warmish tones into the midtones. Then in detail, we don't want any sharpening. 
uh, as you can see immediately Lightroom adds by default to 40% of sharpening but still when you upload these images into Instagram Instagram with the compression adds some sharpening to counter that compression so we're gonna go with a zero and as you can see the image is not sharp at all go to extreme and it's looking very hideous just put it down all the way down to zero now in effects no vignette for this edit but we are going to add some film grain or some grain that replicates the film grain from cinema cameras so for the grain we're going to go with a plus 40 on the quantity 48 on the size to make it a bit more notorious and then finally a 23 on the roughness here we can see the film grain now here it's blending in with the noise and that's not ideal guys but this image in particular has a very high iso in aps-c cameras so it's going to perform quite nice on other images which are better exposed and finally to achieve the color grading of billy d we're going to go down to camera calibration and just alter the basic colors of the image i've moved the hue of the reds to the left you can see everything turns towards the purplish to the other side towards the yellowish we're going to go with the 95 percent over here on the reddish tones and then a minus 32 on their saturation then the greens we're going to go to plus 61 and a minus 9 on the saturation and this basically is dedicated to achieving those skin tones that he has guys finally we're going to go with a minus 28 in the blues and basically that's his color grading now sometimes he has a purplish tint to the highlights but it's not very common on his feet for that we're going to go all the way down to tint and just add a bit of purple into the image and basically everything tends towards a purplish tone now for some images what we want to do is just add a bit more temperature to make the skin tones a bit more flashy just like that guys but not too much but in this case the preset is finished let's see how it performs on different scenarios and how to modify it so we're going to go to the left palette hit on this plus sign on presets and create the preset ability then we're going to check mark every single thing that we want to pass onto the other images in this case contrast exposure and white balancing we're not going to check mark them and then we're going to hit create okay before we jump into the other images let me show you the differences between his style relieves and onaris's style so this is how ability style looks then we're going to jump into monaris and at the time when we edited monaris style it was very purple now it's sending towards more of the teal colors very harsh and contrasty teal and orange look i'm not a fan of that but this is the style that we had originally with her and then ray Lives style is a bit more contrasty flashy towards that very teal color in the shadows and in the highlights guys so they're very similar styles very cinematic three the three of them but again here we have them all in the edit like preset pack so here we have another portrait first of all i'm just going to crop it to a 21 by 9 just like that and then apply the preset that we've already done it will be under user presets again this preset I've, i will add it to the edit like preset pack if you want to go and check it out here we can see the before and after it's looking quite nice guys let's add a little bit more exposure just a bit and pull up the temperature just a little bit ever so slightly and i'm quite happy with those results here we can see that the film grain is quite nice in this image it's not too distracting here we have this image in a more overcast day let's see the preset and it's looking quite nice now in this case i would add a bit more exposure because this image is quite underexposed and then we can see the skin tones tend towards that yellowish tones that he has now maybe if you want to skip and you don't like the bluish tones in the shadows you can go all the way down to the blue channel in the tone curves and just pull down a bit of the point that we put into in middle of the blacks and the shadows just pull it down and here we have a bit more clean of an image Okay, so we have this image of people in the metro just doing their thing. Let's apply the preset, looking quite nice actually. Pull up the exposure just a bit to compensate. And in this case, just maybe just pull up, pull down the exposure or pull it up. And it's looking quite nice. Just pulling up the exposure just a bit and lowering the contrast to make it a bit less harsh. Quite nice guys, what do you think? Why on our keyboard to see the before and after? And there's the film grain if we zoom in finally i have this image that i've edited so many times maybe you're sick of it but it really it's a really nice image to implement different styles so let's crop it and then i'm just going to apply the preset this is a very underexposed image just pull up the exposure and it's looking quite nice guys maybe in this case i would add a little less temperature pull it down towards the bluish tones and maybe just pull down a bit of the blues that we added in the shadows just like that guys it's looking quite nice you can see that the image is very flat it's not too sharp and it's very unsharp actually and we have that film grain that adds to the cinematic effect with f on our keyboard we can see it full screen and it really looks like if it was shot from 
a screenshot from a movie. So that's my interpretation on the color grading of Billy D guys. Remember that the preset that we've just created, I've added it to the Ed Like Preset Pack, which is linked down below if you want to support me. Also guys, remember to share this video to anyone who you may think is interested in color grading in video and photo. That really helps me a lot to continue to do this for the foreseeable future. Anyways guys, if you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to notify when I upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes, hope you're doing well, having a nice day. Cheers to all of you, see you in the next one.